This is Salome. If you grew up as any kind of Christian denomination, then you probably remember she's the woman who danced for Herod and then asked for the head of John the Baptist on a platter and got it. This is Salome, Salome, Arizona. Spelled the same, pronounced different, which I found out. Before I really dug in, I thought that Salome was named after Salome, but it's not. It's named after the wife of one of the founders. Salome is where we're headed today, and we're going to go there to visit a little roadside chapel called... It's called Little Roadside Chapel. Maximalist minibus with Mary and Captain and you. Get on the bus! I am playing tourist today. I'm just trying to forget about the fact that there's people in Boston tapping their foot and staring at their watches waiting for me to get back, and I'm just going to try to enjoy the day. Just going to try to be here, you know, and here being here in this bus, but then later today it's going to be at the Roadside Chapel in Salome. Salome is an unincorporated community in uh, La Paz County. Arizona's got a population of about 1,700, and it was founded in 1904 by uh, Dick Wick Hall, we're going to talk about him in a minute, and Ernest Hall and George Pratt, whose wife was Grace Salome, Sal Salome, Salome, I don't know how she pronounced it, but it was, anyway, her middle name became the name of the town, if we're going to call it a town. Now, Dick Wick Hall is probably the most famous person who ever came out of Salome. You haven't heard of him, I'm sure, but he started this little newsletter called uh, The Salome Sun. It was just, you know, sort of folksy humor. And that got him recruited to write for the Saturday Evening Post, which was a really big deal in the 1920s. Dick was a funny guy with like a real zest for life, it seems like. I think I probably would have liked him. He owned a gas station and he named it Laughing Gas Station, which adds just a layer of irony to the way he died because See, in 1926, Dick Wick Hall was at the top of his game. He had just signed a contract to be a screenwriter for Universal Studios, and then he just went to the dentist to have an extraction, and he got an infection that turned into sepsis, and he died. That's kind of a cruel joke. Here, here's the thing you've always wanted, and now we're going to kill you with a routine dental procedure. He lives on, though, because he's celebrated every year in Salome on Dick Wick Hall Day. Like a lot of places in Arizona, Salome is really accommodating to RVers, in particular, you know, the, the snowbirds. Um, they have a KOA and they also have, they have a bunch of campgrounds, but then they also have this really cheap county-owned campground. It's eight bucks a day for dry camping, a hundred bucks a month, which is a great price for a place with like showers, you know, it has services. And I think for a lot of people who are just not really that down with the boondocking, it would be a great deal. But I'm not in Salome to camp. I, uh, I could have been if I had planned a little better because I've known I was coming here since um, the RTR. Brad came to visit me at the RTR. Hi, Brad. Brad has been watching the channel pretty much since the beginning and he suggested I check this place out. Turn right onto Navajo Street. And I kind of have a thing for churches, so it appealed to me. And when I say I have a thing for churches, what I mean is the buildings, like church buildings. I'm not saying like, not the, what all's behind it, you know, just the buildings I'm talking about. I'm not somebody that goes around talking about God and what church I go to and stuff like that. Not, not usually. I hear him talking about it. I was raised Catholic and that's probably the tradition that speaks to me the loudest at this point. I, I like the rituals and I'll be honest with you, I really like the stuff, you know, the stained glass, the candlesticks, the incense, the statues. I like all that stuff. I know a lot about the saints because the stories of the saints are really interesting. So I've kind of learned some of that stuff along the way. But generally speaking, I've always had like a relationship with God since I was a kid, but it's pretty personal, you know. Sometimes you hear people using God as like a selling tool. I mean, I've heard that on YouTube a lot. In fact, uh, somebody on the staff of one of those YouTube gurus, a big one, uh, tried to convince me to take a class by telling me that God wanted me to take it. I don't study with that particular pod of people anymore because I just think that's gross. If telling me you're into God is something you think you need to do to convince me that you have integrity, knock yourself out, but don't be surprised if I end up deciding that you really don't have any integrity. 
religion is up there with politics on the list of things we just don't talk about in polite company. And I get it because, you know, it's one of those things that can divide us. But, you know, my thought about that is we're so divided already. <laughs> Why not? Maybe talking about those things is kind of the only path out. The problem with the God conversation is that um, if the only people talking about God and religion and spirituality and all that stuff are the people who have like a really clear definition already for themselves, you know, who can confidently pop it into conversation that they're a Christ follower or they go to church A or even, you know, that they're an atheist, then the rest of us, you know, the vast majority, I think, I think, who walk around feeling some kind of connection that kind of waxes and wanes you know, they're going to feel, they're going to just kind of be stunned into silence because they feel like they're alone. I mean, I haven't done a scientific study. I can't tell you for sure that that's the majority, but it would make sense to me that most people believe in God to some extent. And um, I think that most people also experience doubt to some extent. So, you know, maybe I'm projecting because that's definitely me. There have definitely been times when I was a little more sure of things, when um, I feel like things would get like put in my path and my attention directed toward them, and then the things that I was directed toward would turn out to be really significant things in my life. I don't know. Um, some people would call that a calling. I have definitely felt called. Of like the past 10 years? Yeah, it hasn't been like that. For the past 10 years, it's kind of been like Lucy and Charlie Brown. You know how Lucy, she always says, kick the football, and Charlie Brown does it, and then she pulls the football out at the last minute, and Charlie Brown does it again, because he's like this eternal optimist. He jumps in, he tries to kick it again, and, you know, she pulls it out again, he kicks again, and this just happens over and over and over, and that's kind of how life is felt, you know? Like, something gets put in my path, I go toward it, and then, boom, it gets yanked away, so... Yeah, maybe I don't understand calling. Maybe I don't look at the right things. I don't know, but it's been a long time since I really felt called. I, mean, I still believe in God. I think I believe in God. <laughs> I think so. You know, the thing is, my life is okay. My life has always been okay. I mean, I haven't had a catastrophic life. You know, I wasn't kidnapped by Somali pirates, and I wasn't um, married off as the child bride of a cult leader. You know, I didn't have to go to war and watch my friends get killed. Yeah, I've had a pretty easy ride, you know, so I don't really have anything to complain about exactly, but I do know that um, my life is better when I feel called. Uh, okay, now I'm probably losing everybody. The religious people are horrified by what I'm saying, and everybody else is going, shut up about God already, you know, so it's a good thing that we are here. We have arrived at the roadside chapel. hoping I would maybe feel it a little more, you know, but yeah, I'm not feeling it. It's a nice place. I just think that 
I don't know. I like my churches with a little more bling. Hey, they have a nature trail over there. I bet you would like that, huh, Captain? Uh, it's my mom. Hey, Mom. How are you? Yeah, just you guess. Well, it's 3,000 miles, Mom. I just left. Well, I'm aiming for Saturday, okay? Well, you made it this long without me, Mom. It's not, no, it's not that long. It's not even a week. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be lying back before and you know it, okay? It was easy. Okay, I gotta go, but um, I'll call you tonight, okay? This path I'm walking on. I think I just promised whoa, to be in whoa. Boston in four days. I've been crying out to any work. And the odds of that, no, there are no odds for that. I won't be in Boston in four days. It's not gonna happen. I think I just lied to my mother. Have you ever wondered if it's awkward? Well, at least maybe she'll be happy for a couple days till she figures all it out. All those dreams that carry wow. your heart. Look at all those cactuses. All the times that you question your purpose. God is not a minimalist, that's for sure. I know I've been there for a while. But there is. I just got called.